Baba get an amen up here? That's right everyone, Dragon Ball Super episode 112 just rolled along and uh, yeah, it literally rolled along. A Saiyan's Vow, Vegeta's Resolution, in crisp HD 1080 punch to the face. Just a side note here, I wanted to just point out the real attention to detail for the episode card. It changed the sky to reflect what's happening in the episode. Which is kind of neat, I just wanted to say that. Where we last left off, everyone was coming to terms about the loss of Universe 6's hit, as well as the entire Dragon Ball fandom. Currently, I believe the fandom's at the denial stage, just going like, no, 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 it wasn't taken out. It, it, it's a copy. Yeah, it's a time skip copy from all the reserve things that he's done over the years. Yeah. If it were the case, then Hit wouldn't have been able to talk to Shampa, but he did. So, yep, Hit's out, I'm afraid. We've got plenty of time to contemplate this, though, because we're spending at least 40 seconds of the episode just panning over every single Universal team, except Universes 3 and 7, oddly. What else has gotten everyone concerned? Well, Jiren, of course. They don't know what he's going to do. Despite that big guy just meditating there, doing nothing, they think he's going to do something. Meanwhile, Goku's trying to come back with a retort and is failing miserably. It's alright, Goku. Don't worry. You just need a couple of episodes to rest up, like Kale did a while back. You'll be fine. This is also confirmed by Whis in the stands. Goku's body may be weak, but his fighting spirit is strong. He's like a paper bag in some ways. Yeah, he may be as weak as one right now, but his fighting spirit to stay in the air and get in your face during a breezy day is very strong. The GP then reminds us all that we are now halfway through the tournament, as well as reminding the Omni Kings the very rules of their own tournament. Oh, bless the cotton socks. Of course, what was I thinking? We're at the beginning of an episode. We need time to fill up. So, uh, yeah. Okay, GP, what are you saying are the other rules for the tournament? Oh, well, of course, the universe with the most remaining fighters at the end of the time limit wins. So, fair enough. Why did we need to know that? Oh, because the Omni Kings are silly. As Aya from Universe 3 points out, Universe 7 is currently in the lead with seven remaining fighters. So, we are still the remaining favourites. You can find out more information about how the universes are faring in my Tournament to Power Halftime Show video. I'll leave a link to it in the description and up top. Moscow then lets out some more air from his balloon-like voice box to tell everyone to target Son Goku. Man, after the seriously bad Megeta debacle in terms of the dub, I really want to know what they're going to do for Moscow. Microsoft Sam, you better start practicing. I'm pretty sure Funimation's going to give you a call. Sure enough, Universe 3 goes into action with three little robots of their own. There are Panchia, Koitsuta, and oh yeah, that Bororetta guy. Giant Robo Fusion, I'm calling it. That colour scheme with the eyes is just so much of a giveaway. It's gonna be like something out of Decker Ranger, or Car Ranger, or Turbo and SPD to you American fans. As Goku's getting ganged up on, Piccolo can sense that his buddy's in trouble and asks Gohan to take care of it, but Gohan doesn't. Uh, Gohan? You okay? Your hair bang giving you trouble there? Your overconfidence showing? What did it say to you? Normally, Gohan would conjure up a PowerPoint presentation and go to a conference to just justify why he absolutely has to help his dad, but he's not doing it. This is weird. I'm feeling really weird right now. He's choosing instead to help Piccolo focus on the two Namekians from Universe 6, Salnel and Pilina. Their initial attack against Gohan and Piccolo ends with, uh... Guess what? Another Keyblade! Seriously, Goku Black's GodTube video is really getting around. Hashtag Keyblade Posse. However, Piccolo's actually a little excited to be fighting strong Namekians for once. It doesn't matter what universe they're from, they're strong, that's the main thing. And ooh, ooh, I can just imagine Piccolo tagging along for some kind of Universe 6 journey arc. It might not just be Goku and Vegeta going to Universe 6, it might be Piccolo as well. Ooh! Shampa realizes the significance of Jiren's power and orders his fighters not to fight him, and instead run away. Oh, Chumper, you silly goose. But that's only after they manage to pick off some other Universe 7 fighters, so that means Universe 6 has the most fighters left, and then they will win, and Chumper will laugh in Beerus' face before he's erased. Oh hey, cool, it's Kale and Khalifa, everybody. All rested up from episode 101, I believe. 
Not only that, but Khalifa is also a little pumped about witnessing Goku's true power and then thinking that she's gonna get to Super Saiyan Blue one of these days. Or hey, maybe even Ultra Instinct if I'm really nice to Goku and he teaches me that. Those rumors of Goku and Khalifa being a lot like Vegeta and Kaba are getting more and more likely by the episode. That's not before, of course, Kale throws a little sass in Khalifa's direction. Good on you, girl. Suddenly, Mona from Universe 4 interrupts and tries to get Khalifa to drink the Kool-Aid. The stage is set for Khalifa to take her on, but wait! Kaba's stepping in to try and be brave! But no, it's because the plot told him to. Seriously, Kaba's really receptive to the plot. Kaba, don't butt in! We want to see Khalifa fight, but- Oh no, wait, no. This is meant to be his episode to really shine. We've not had that yet, so... Okay, fine, alright, okay, whatever. Kaba realizes that Kale and Khalifa need to rest up some more because they are Universe 6's secret weapon now that Hit's gone. And we get all of this with some really cool animation and stills. Kaba looks so good right now. Okay, Kaba, put up your dukes. But just one thing. Just go Super Saiyan immediately, okay? Don't resort to force tension like Goku. Be better than him. So, yep, he powers up to Super Saiyan 1. So yeah, that screenshot that we saw a few days back, that wasn't Super Saiyan 2. That was a little bit of a red herring, at least for now. Still, gotta say, Super Saiyan's no mean feat, and Kaba does use said feat as a key attack. I'm not even kidding. I had to go back and watch that four times to make sure I was seeing things straight. Yeah, Kaba just used his foot to actually launch key. Yeah, that just takes me back to Goku launching a Kamehameha from the feet back in the Piccolo Jr. saga. Despite knocking her back, Mono goes big and tanks Kaba in a big way. Knocking the Super Saiyan out of him in the process. Uh-oh, Kaba, are you okay? Are you at the risk of becoming a Tarbal Kaba? Please don't become a Tarbal Kaba. He tries to escape the scene by actually propelling himself with Ki, a tried and tested maneuver in Dragon Ball, but it's not enough. Kaba is really struggling here. He can just sense the Tarbal seeping into his character arc as he gazes down over the edge of the arena. It's not looking good. Kaba tries to trick Mona into rolling off the arena, but the big gal is able to turn on a dime, and Kaba's trick is just about to fail, and he goes hurling off the arena, and you expect that he's going to be eliminated, but it's a little bit too much slow motion for my liking. Something dramatic is about to happen, and sure enough, it does. Yep, told you, Vegeta is here to save the day. And I bet Kaba's thinking right now, oh my god, it's Senpai! Yep, it is indeed Senpai. But instead of pulling him up, he chucks him over the top. Classic Jeets. Of course, Mona tries to counter Vegeta, but he blasts her away in one hit. Oh man, that just makes Kaba's situation all the more tragic. It's still pretty funny though. The, the Mona attack, not the Kaba actually feeling bad bit. I, I have some kind of empathy towards Kaba. M moving on. And also, this isn't the first time that Vegeta has helped out Universe 6. Remember the baseball episode. Never forget. However, Vegeta is not here because he wanted to be nice. He is here to try and make Kaba power up and prove himself once and for all. He doesn't want to see any weak Saiyans in his sight. He remembers Tarbal. He's related to Tarbal. He also remembers Kaba's promise to take him to planet Sadala in Universe 6 someday. But Kaba doesn't and... Ooh, that's a bad Kaba. But, of course, after the dramatic flashback, Kaba does remember. Vegeta then reveals that his wish on the Super Dragon Balls will be to resurrect at least the Saiyans. So that means the Saiyan race can live on once again. To be fair, Vegeta is the current MVP of the tournament with 9 knockouts, so yeah, it could happen. And don't think that is just me assuming that he'll just wish the Saiyans back. He'll wish everyone back, or at least more people. It's not clear cut right now, we just need a little bit more. But still, Vegeta's actually being selfless. Cool. And please, Zenos, go away! You're ruining the moment! Meanwhile, Freezer has also been snooping on said moment and is choosing what kind of way he's going to try and muck everything up. Exactly how he's going to try and mess everything up remains to be seen because Mono is back to take out Kaba. We then get a sudden spark from Kaba. <gasps> oh, there's Super Saiyan 2. There it is. There it is. It's okay, guys. We're just getting the dramatic build up. After some more beatings, it looks like Kaba's indeed going to lose. But then Mona makes the mistake of talking smack about his senpai. And Kaba will not have people making fun of his senpai! Boom! Super Saiyan 2, everybody. Right in Mona's stomach. She tries to crush him, but he blasts her again. The sparking is fierce here. So fierce, in fact, that it hurls Mona out of the ring and out of the tournament. Universe 4 is now down to three fighters. 
Vegeta acknowledges Kaba's power-up with a well done, but his attention is more focused on Jiren and what he's going to do. Suddenly, Toppo steps in and demands that he fights Vegeta, but Vegeta is not interested. But then Toppo presses the Goku button. He shouldn't have did that. As Kaba's looking for Kale and Khalifla, Frieza humbly steps in and humbly asks Kaba to fight him. Cocky after his discovery of Super Saiyan 2, Kaba accepts and then immediately regrets it. Here, without any emotional baggage, Frieza can let loose his hatred towards Saiyans, towards Kaba. It doesn't matter right now, he can vent. Inspired by this, Kaba then unleashes a Super Saiyan 2 Gallic Gun. But it's not enough because Golden Freezer comes in with some finger beams and uh, isn't that a little bit of overkill? Because yeah, Kaba's out of the ring, but that could have killed him. But hey, uh, it's okay. It looks cool. Uh, yeah, Kaba's out now. We see Goku and Vegeta regroup. Goku's a bit apologetic about Kaba's loss, but Vegeta doesn't really care right now. But we know he actually does care because we know what his wish is going to be. Oh, jeez, you and your sundereiness. Just then, the three robots from Universe 3 step in again to attack Goku. But luckily for Goku, Khalifla steps in and tanks all three of them, at least for the time being. I bet Goku's feeling a little bit excited down there when he sees Khalifla at Super Saiyan 2, who then suddenly challenges Goku to a fight. And we know exactly why she's doing this, because she wants more power. And that's how we end the episode, Khalifla probably wanting to know how to use Super Saiyan 3. And oh boy, she's gonna have fun with that one. All in all, this episode might have been a little light on fighting action in comparison to the last few episodes, but it was still quite solid. We got to see Kaba finally reach the levels of Super Saiyan 2, as well as some master-student bonding. We also got to see Frieza's negativity towards the Saiyans. Oh, it's still there, it didn't go away. He just had to be quiet. Kaba, oh yeah, he can be nasty towards him. But yeah, that was still good to see. But anyway, that was my review for Dragon Ball Super Episode 112, Tune in next time for my review of episode 113. Until next time, be sure to like and subscribe. Catch you later!